Well, last Sunday we talked about Advent, and we talked about the fact that uh, the word Advent uh, comes from a Latin word meaning coming. And so these weeks leading up to Christmas, what we're doing is we're preparing our minds and our hearts to truly celebrate Christmas. And we're preparing our hearts and minds to think about the next coming of Jesus. We call it the second coming of Jesus. And uh, so it's a chance for us to look forward with expectation to the coming of Christ as we embark on a journey of hope, love, joy, and peace. <clears throat> now, we, we've talked about the star leading people to Jesus uh, during the, the first birth, you know, the first coming. Uh, but um, I, I want to just remind you that Jesus is the star that points the way. Um, he's the one that leads us through this journey. And so as we continue to follow the star on this journey of love, um, it's a love that never gives up. It's a love that's conquered sin and death. Uh, it's a love that surrounds us daily and fills us eternally. It's God's perfect love. Now, um, Haley used a word she didn't quite know how to pronounce. And it's a word that probably you wouldn't know unless you went to seminary. You've probably stumbled on it in the Bible, especially in some translations. The word propitiation. It's a word that means satisfaction, God's, God's displeasure with us. And by the way, He has a right to be displeased, frankly. His displeasure has been satisfied in the person and the work, in the death and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. So um, that's what Christmas is all about. It's all about Jesus coming into the world. Now here's something for you to think about, though. If you think about Christmas being, being that, well, for the most part, it really isn't. Do you realize... Um, let me throw out a figure here. Over $1 trillion. That is the amount of money that sh American shoppers spent from November 2016 to January 2017. In other words, during the Christmas season, Americans spent over $1 trillion. So we do indeed live in a consumer society, do we not? Let me throw out another number. $60 billion. $60 billion. That's the amount of money that people spent on their pets. <laughs> now, mind you, these are pets do, that we have to walk and we have to clean up after. Pets that uh, we have to feed. And listen, <clears throat> I in doing resets at Kroger and watching, uh, there, there are, uh, there's a huge aisle. Both sides are packed with all kinds of goodies just for dogs and cats. We, we have dry dog food, wet dog food. Dry cat food, wet cat food. They even have, it's Highway 70, they even have a refrigerator with <clears throat> refrigerated meats for your pets. Now, it's obvious we love our pets. <laughs> and they love us back. But, but truly, I mean, when you think about it, uh, other than that uh, little unconditional love kind of thing where they come and lick you when you're down. And uh, <clears throat> my, uh, my grandson, Ethan, loves animals. He even has a pet python, which I haven't really gotten acquainted with yet. And I'm not planning on getting too acquainted with. <clears throat> but he loves animals. And there's nothing wrong with loving animals. I do think sometimes maybe they eat better and maybe even live better than we do sometimes. However, as much as 
we love our animals. Um, I want you to, it's not an exact comparison, but I want you to think about how God loves us. He loves us even when, like we were hearing in the video, He loves us when we reject Him over and over again. He loves us when we disappoint Him over and over again. He loves us so much that it's not because of anything we've done or could do for Him. It's not because of anything we've earned from Him. It's simply because He chooses to. Let me ask you a question. How do you perceive God's love for you? Um, Do you feel you need to earn it? Do you wonder if God's love is even meant for you? Do you see the overflow of God's love in your own life toward other people? Well, we're going to spend just a few minutes diving into this deep subject, and and it is deeper than you imagine. Again, uh, usually when we talk about love, we're just scratching the surface. But this is a deep subject, and the Bible has a lot to say about it. But let me just start at the beginning. Love from the start. Because we often talk about, at Christmas time, love coming down. You know, when love came down. Well, we say that love entered the world as a baby, and that's true. But you would be mistaken if you think that that's where it started. From the very beginning, when God said, let there be light. In the very beginning, from the beginning of creation up to today, um, and especially in the Bible, in in the whole story of the Bible, It's really a love story. Think about this. Would you have a baby if you knew that that baby would grow up to cause you hurt and disappointment, would reject your love and turn away from you? Would you be thrilled about having a baby if that happened? (laughs) Would you want to bring a baby into the world if you knew they were going to um, hurt and ridicule and turn away from you. Here's, Here's the thing. When God said, let there be light, He already knew that we would reject Him. He already knew that we would turn away from Him in sin and disobedience. He already knew that his heart would break and that he would need to send his son into the world to redeem it. That he would have to pay an enormous price to buy us back from our disobedience and our rebellion. And yet he chose to create us anyway. Love. Bible talks about it. You know, God's not some distant uncle who suddenly shows up with a gift that nobody knows what to do with. I was working with a guy named Anthony, and uh, we were resetting the gift cards. Well, you probably would believe you, but it's phenomenal how many gift cards people buy this time of the year. We, We can't keep the gift card racks filled. He was uh, commenting on the fact that uh, he wished when we were children that they had had gift cards that we could get instead of some of the presents we received. (laughs) Because then we could have gotten what we really wanted (laughs) instead of that sweater (laughs) or that cap or something that we weren't so thrilled about. Well, uh, God's not like that. He's not a cold, miserly, distant figure who grudgingly gives us an occasional offering or token. 
Psalm 139 tells us that God is intimately involved in our lives even before we're born. He knows what's going on in the womb. He sees us before we're born. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love... He predestined us for the adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will to the praise of His glorious grace which He has freely given us in the one He loves. God's love doesn't depend on us. It's not something we earn. It's not something we deserve. It just it starts with God. God is love. John tells us. It's a part of his nature. It's a part of his character. His love for us was from the beginning of time, and it will continue throughout eternity. And it's, it's mind-boggling to kind of try to wrap your mind around that kind of love. In fact, it's so mind-boggling that Paul the Apostle tells us that we, we should know the love that passes knowledge. <laughs> So try to figure that one out. <clears throat> it's love from the start. It's love coming from God to us, whether we accept it, reject it, whatever we do with it. The second thing I want you to think about is love enough. Have you ever had a hard time loving God? Come on now. When you were disappointed, when you were hurt, when you lost someone close to you that you love dearly? Do you ever, do you ever question God? Do you ever wonder? Do you have a hard time loving Him sometimes? Well, you're in good company. A lot of the Bible uh, characters did too. Do you have a hard time sometimes accepting His love for you? Uh, do you ever doubt that His love is enough to cover all the pain, the hurt, the selfishness, the evil uh, in this world? Or that His love is even enough to cover your own pain and your own hurt? If we're honest, I think most of us would answer yes to those questions, some of us more than others. But um, despite what we may know in our heads and believe in our hearts. There's often a daily struggle to live with the reality of God's love for us. It's so different from our own ability to love. Uh, it may be vastly different from the love or the lack of it that you've experienced in the human relationships that you've had or in life in general. Again, it's not because of um, what you've done. It's because of what He's chosen to do. Now, think of the Christmas story and the characters involved. Think of the bewildered young couple on their trip at the very last moments of pregnancy uh, think about the smelly band of shepherds the group of foreign mystics we call magi uh, when you dig behind the bathrobes and the fake animals uh, in the pageant scene you get a different picture there's real life here I mean uh, no woman in her right mind would choose a long trip when she's about to deliver a baby. That's what they had to do. Shepherds were bewildered when they, the sky was filled with an angelic host telling them to go to Bethlehem, of all places. Because <clears throat> in Bethlehem, they would find a king. Yeah, everybody knows if you're going to find a Jewish king, you go to Jerusalem, which, by the way, just happens to have been proclaimed uh, the capital by uh, President Trump that he acknowledges that that's the capital of Israel and the embassy will be moving there. 
But you don't look for a king in Bethlehem. It just doesn't happen. Where would you fit in the scene on that night so long ago? Where do you find yourself now in this season of darkness and doubt and this cold, and we have had some cold weather lately, cold winter night in your life? No matter where you are in your journey, God's love is for you. It's more vast and perfect than you can ever fully and completely grasp this side of heaven. But it is worth opening your heart and your mind to this Christmas season. Maybe, um, maybe it's a little like this prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed. I just mentioned a part of it. He says, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all of God's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that passes, surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Filled up. Can you imagine it? being filled up with love? That's what God wants for you in your life right now. He wants you to be filled up with His love. Now, understand this. It's not something you can do. It's not something you can produce. This love is not a love that you have within you. It's a love that God fills you with. It's not easy. Um, this is the Living Bible's paraphrase of what Peter tells us in 1 Peter 1.22. Now you can have real love for everyone because your souls have been cleansed from your selfishness and hatred when you trusted Christ to save you. So see to it that you really do love each other warmly with all your hearts. But we love Him, why? Because He first loved us. That's why we can love, because He first loved us. He showed us love. He showed us the way. And He was willing to fill us up with His love if we'll let Him. Toward the end of His letter, and I'm going to read a little longer passage from the Bible, okay? But you know what? Sometimes we ought to hear the Bible more than we do preachers. I didn't say that, did I? Well, maybe I did. Dear friends, John says in his book, his little epistle, 1 John, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world. You know, John 3.16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He sent His, only, His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him, and He in us. He has given us His Spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and they obey in God. <clears throat> and we know and rely on the love that God has for us. Again, he says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. 
In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. There's a whole lot that we could say about this passage. But let me just mention three or four things briefly. God is love and he sent his son as a sacrifice for us. This is Jesus. God so loved that he gave. Christmas is about giving, but it's not about spending a lot of money. You know, if we would just open up our hearts and give from our hearts, not give money necessarily, give, give encouragement, give support, give some understanding, give a little patience, you know? Sometimes some of the best gifts I've ever received were not tangible gifts. And just a little hint, you know, I appreciate the fact that at, during October, you have what you call Pastor Appreciation Month, and you give us a, a gift, and we a monetary gift, and we appreciate that. You know, sometimes it'd be just as meaningful to me if you just stood up here and said, hey, Pastor, we appreciate you. <laughs> sometimes that, that means more than the money. That, is that weird? How many of you would like for someone to just out of the blue say, man, I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you've done in this and this and this. I appreciate who you are and how you carry yourself in this area. I mean, these things are things we just don't think about, but they're important. Second thing is we can know and rely on God's love. God's love is enough. It is enough. If you, you know, <clears throat> here's the problem. It's not that God doesn't love us. It's that we have a hard time opening up our lives to him and letting his love break through. We don't even want to do that with other people around us because we're afraid if we open up our lives, open up our hearts, we'll get hurt again. God's not going to hurt you. His love is enough if you will let it be enough for you. And we love because God first loved us. And His love overflows within us and here's the reason because his want, he wants his love to flow through us to other people god doesn't want us to be a dam d a m god god's love is flowing into us but we shouldn't be a dam that bottles it up and keeps it inside we ought to be a reservoir that lets it flow out from our our lives to others 1 John 3.16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Love is sacrificial. Love costs If we, if we don't get that, we're missing the most important thing about love. It's costly. I'm going to leave you with this benediction from Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. The Apostle Paul says, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with the all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, remember the, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Will you let God fill you up with love this Christmas? Let's pray.